And we are live with the Aaron Hour. Aaron Hours. Uh, with me, of course, is my co-host, James. Hey. We're going to start things off. Last week was kind of a practice week. We're going to start things off like we normally do by reading a, a poem from my book of poems. I love poems. Um, I don't remember which poem I was on. This one looks really long, so we're going to skip it. All right. This is the Rodora on being asked, Whence is the flower? by Ralph Waldo Emerson. In May, when sea winds pierced our solitudes, I found the fresh Rodora in the woods, spreading its leafless blooms in, the, in a damp nook to pleasure the desert and the sluggish brook. To... Uh, the purple petals fallen in the pool made the black water with their beauty. Uh, here, wait, I, here might the red bird come to come his plumes to cool, and court the flowers that cheapen his array. Rodora, if the sages ask thee why this charm is wasted on the earth and sky, tell them, dear, that if eyes were made for seeing, then beauty is its own excuse for being. Why thou wert there, O rival of the rose, I never thought to ask, I never knew. But in my simple ignorance, suppose, the same, the self-same power that brought me there brought you. Well, that was pretty good. Wouldn't you agree, James? Yeah, thank you for starting off with that. Yeah, that's how I like to start things off. Um, bang. Boom. All right. Next, we have a special treat today. I tried to get some guests on. They all said no. Did you say treats? Yes. I do have some treats, uh, a special treat. I found some. I am hungry. I can't have food in here. That's not allowed. Oh, my God. Uh, my, my special treats is I found. Uh, some things I wrote in sophomore year of high school and I have not progressed as a writer whatsoever. I stayed constant. Amazing. Let's look at this. We're, we won't start off with these cause I have a ton of these. I found a ton of papers I've written, a ton of little short stories, little poems, little things. Uh, this, this one, the first one I clicked on is by the author Aaron Kemper, not yet a New York times bestselling author yet. But you never know. That's that's how I titled my own work that I turned into my uh, teacher in high school. Just, I think that's a what, little interesting. Wait, what type of class? An English class? Really? Yeah. You had that much creative freedom? Yeah. Wow. I, I, uh, one of the things I'm very proud of is I wrote a cookbook in my English class that was co-authored by Wolfgang Puck, the famous... Uh, chef. Yeah, I think we, we've talked about Wolfgang Puck before. I think we have, but uh, that that was a lie. He didn't actually co-author that. I just just said he did. I just made that up. And I, I mean, sometimes it's fun to just make up stuff. Yeah. Which we don't do on this show. No, everything's real that mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. It's... Yep. Uh, let me look at my notes. Okay. Okay. I have one. I have a little thing. Okay. Here's one thing. I thought of a funny idea that happened today at work. Uh, somebody was talking about cheesecake. And I'm not sure if you can guess where this is going, but that gave me a brilliant idea for a funny idea. Does it boil down to like something with cheese? And? So maybe something with cake? Yeah. I wanted to... I maybe do a little picture, a little video, a little short little thing of me eating a piece of cake, a normal cake with a slice of cheese on it, and saying, man, I do love cheesecake. Dude, the creativity yeah. you have. <laughs> it's pretty pretty insane. It's innovative. I mean, I mean, to say that, I mean, weren't you saying earlier that, like, you know, your writing and stuff from, from sophomore year of high school has been just as good as it is now, right? Yeah. 
I would argue that maybe there's a little bit of an increase too. A little bit of an increase. Yeah. Like better, like you're already good, right? But even better than good. Not to stroke your ego, but. Okay. Yeah. Well, I found out, James, we have one listener that I can confirm is listening right now. Uh, wow. Who, who could that be? Sebastian is listening right now. So Wait. we have one other listener or one listener confirmed. Is Sebastian the... You, no, you don't know. Uh, what, what's the Andrew Tate guy? That's no, we're not. No, or, not that, but not, not him. Uh, no. <laughs> the, no, not that guy. No, you may have met him. I don't think so. I doubt it. He, he's a interesting cat. Oh, he said we have two listeners. Wow. That's crazy. All right, James, you have anything to talk about? I don't want to start going straight into my material right right away. Well, I mean, I was trying to, you know, on my way over here, I was trying to be, like, productive because I was like, you know, I should come up with, like, something to talk about like you do, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was, like, last minute, you know, thinking, <clears throat> driving down here, and as I was driving and I was trying to think of something, then... I just like see something and be like, ooh, like mm -hmm. pumpkin bread. And then, oh. and then I try to think of something else again. And I'd be like, ooh, pineapple bread. And I go, oh. And then I'd like try to think about something else. And then, ooh, like there's a bagel over here on the seat to the right. And I go, oh. So in the end, you know, did I fill up my stomach? Yeah. But did I come up with anything creative to say no or any notes? No, I didn't. Well, it sounds like you have a whole like bakery in your passenger seat. Yeah. Huh. Well, I had some ideas for things to talk about and I wrote them on a uh, little notepad and I left that notepad at home. I were what probably could have happened is I probably could have eaten it while I was eating some lasagna. Cause you know, yeah, you should do the eat and think like I did. Yeah, that type. Yeah, uh, I do that. Well, talking about interesting, cool things. Last night, you'll never guess what I got for free. Food. Yeah, oh yeah, but what kind? Um, starts with an L. Uh, uh, lasagna. Yeah, you betcha. Got some lasagna after work. I have a whole giant container of lasagna. Three pounds. Maybe? I, I don't know, but it was a lot. It was pretty heavy. I don't know if it was three pounds, but got some leftover lasagna. Got a little bit of enchilada casserole. And another. Uh, I think I might have four listeners. I don't know. Oh. My friend just texted me, and I can't tell if he's responding to the latest video I made or this, because both of these, this and the latest video I made, are equally terrible. So and he he just texted this is terrible. This is pretty cool. I like the fame that I'm getting from this. With fame, there's always hate. Yeah, that's true. The fame of don't let it get to your head. Three people, four people, maybe five. Actually, I don't know if my boss is listening. Should I should I read what I've written down on this notebook? Depends. Let's see, it's 8.30. We just got started, but it is getting close to our time for a break. Um, how about this? Should I, I'll read this story. We can, we can fill up the rest of this hour. The audience loves this. They, my <laughs> audience loves when we come, we come up with our plan on the spot. Because, you know, most people don't know how to be as funny and as naturally gifted in being charming as we are you know cunning i don't know if you can use cunning to describe a being being a funny person but that's one way to put it i'm a i'm a cunning comedian that's some nice alliteration there uh but people like to have an inside look on how we operate you know uh the people like to be like oh that's how i um, that's how my favorite funny person is funny. 
That's how the great Aaron is funny. Wait, how would we show them? Because we're talking about what we're doing for the rest of this hour oh. and a half. So, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to do what I have written on this this notebook. We'll take a break. Oops, knocked my mic out of the way. Uh, we'll ad lib a whole bunch till nine. Uh, and then then we can read some of the stuff I've written on my phone or written that I wrote in sophomore year. Yeah, you know, I would even encourage your audience to like take notes of what's of the plan. That is like that an is, agenda. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna say I encourage your audience to give in suggestions, but we we can't trust the audience. No, we're the funny ones. Yeah. They're, they're the listeners that aren't funny. Yeah, we tell That's, them what to do. They aren't. They aren't exactly. allowed to have. A, maybe they might be better at other things. Like, not as cunning though. <laughs> not as cunning. There, there's no cunning comedians out there that nope. are listening. Uh, so, I don't know. Usually, I tend to think of my audience as like I try to picture my audience as the intelligence of like a three year old. Or no, that's too young. I try to picture my audience as like, I pretend they're a whole bunch of eight-year-olds. And so that's why I try to keep everything simple. Because, you know, eight-year-olds are you know, eight-year-olds. Yeah, eight-year-olds are eight-year-olds. That's a really good point. Very fair. But I would also say like, well, why don't we, you know, talk about things that they're really interested in? What, eight, like Eight-year-olds? What, yeah, what do you think they're interested in? Because the five people that are listening are all basically... They're basically eight-year-olds. Yeah, so you should talk about eight-year-old things. Well, I mean, I like dinosaurs. And with that, it's time for a quick little... uh, Oops. A quick little uh, thing. Hold on one sec. All right, and we are back. Uh, Um... I was we, just looking at, yeah, well, go ahead. I was just about to say, like, we've received some outstanding. Um, yeah, maybe. I just got a message from one of our listeners, and they said, we love the radio show. Keep doing these great bits. And I was like, I will try. All right, let me read what I've written. You, you ready, James? You have no idea what this is about. Yeah, but I'm ready. And I'm sure our audience is thrilled for what's about to come. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I've discovered a loophole, James. And what's that? I can trick myself into being happy. How would you do that? Well, how, you may ask. This is all this is part of the script. Uh it is a very simple <laughs> it is very simple when you take it apart piece by piece. Although any therapist would be aghast at this technique, you know. The first piece is learning how to lose a dream. Do you know what that means? No, what does that mean? It means... Uh, Actually, yes, I do. I do know what it means. Continue. Dreaming, uh, somehow you like trick your brain into being like, I want to dream about this. I want to dream I'm living in a chocolate house, eating chocolate, sitting on a chocolate toilet. And then your brain is like, okay, and boom, you do. That was all written down. Everything I just said about chocolate was written down. Uh... A skill that I developed as a child was learning how to lucid dream. I just, like, you know, one day just knew how to do it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I could change my dreams into anything I wanted as a kid, within reason. You know, when dreaming, there are rules, certain rules. I can't dream about certain things in the dreams. I'm not going to get into that kind of stuff. That's uh, Dreams are very interesting to me, and I have, like, a long, I could go on a long diatribe, long monologue about dreams and stuff. But... I'm sure my audiences would be thrilled to hear about all that stuff. They love that kind of stuff, uh, as do I. But I can't do that for sake of time. Um, several years ago, I don't remember when, I refined my lucid dreaming techniques, and now I'm very well versed in the art of lucid dreaming. Uh, here's where the trick comes in. Okay, this is, this is where we're getting to stuff now. We know what lucid dreaming is. We're going to put something else together here. Uh, when I was a kid, I have a distinct memory of being able to fly. I remember floating around in my house, in my apartment. James knows this, knows this apartment. I remember floating down the hallway and back. I have a distinct memory of that. And I was like, that can't be real, because I tried to do it when I was awake, and it just didn't work. And I was like, huh, I wonder when I flew. 
And I realized that's because it was a dream that felt so real. I thought I had flown and I had the memory of flying. And I was like, what if I can take this to my advantage, right? Uh, okay, wait, Howard, through rigorous deductive reasoning, I, that's where it ends. That's where this, my, my script ends. I'm going to ad lib this now. Um, uh, oh, I remember now getting back on track. How to be happy through dreams. Basically, the trick is, right, I lucid dream about things that make me happy, and then I wake up and I'm happy. And that's the trick. Is it momentary? momentary? What's the word? Moment. Is your happiness momentarily? Momentarily? Is it momentarily? 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 Momentarily. Maybe we should spend the next 10 minutes figuring out how to pronounce this word. I think that'd be a funny bit. Uh, <laughs> I thought about that for a second. Yeah, as well. yeah, I could see you, the, the train running in your head. Well, the, the thing is, is, right, the memories don't last of the dreams, but the feeling lasts. So For how long, though? Uh, however long I want. I don't know. You have control. Of Not really. Happiness. It's like maybe a day or so, and then I go to bed. Dream? So it's like a high almost. Yeah, but... A long high. I do it myself. Through dreams. I mean, you could... No, I, I, no you're going to... You're gonna <laughs> I can't <laughs> yeah, disclose. Yeah, I know you're going to say. Uh, so what usually happens is I dream about just like bathing and eating in lasagna. And I don't remember dreaming about that. And the next day I woke up and I was like, man, I feel great. Wait, did you say bathing in lasagna? Nope. I didn't. No, I mean, for, what did you say? I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't? No, I did. I, no, I didn't. No, no. I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. Okay, what did you say? I didn't say that. No, but what what did you say? I, I didn't say that though. Okay. Let's Nick. move on. Let's move on. Aaron. Uh. Well, that was supposed to take a lot longer. That little topic. Um, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, you should ask your audience about, um, like topics. You know what I'm saying? Like when people, when you like open up a forum, mm -hmm. it's like, what do you want to hear? Well, see, my audience isn't the brightest, <laughs> so I'm right, not... they're eight year olds. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they could type out a couple letters and like formulate a sentence. They like like <laughs> dinosaurs. Roar. I mean, I like dinosaurs too. I think they're pretty cool. I don't have a favorite dinosaur though. And it's not like I don't like I'm obsessed with dinosaurs. I just think they're cool. Like, how could you not think a dinosaur is cool? A big thingy that goes roar. Yeah. I mean, did you ever watch a dinosaur train? I, I have a I had a book that was uh, called Dinosaur Train. It was a it was a good book. Dude, I learned about like, because doesn't he go like, I have a hypothesis or something, and that's that's how I learned the word hypothesis was watching dinosaurs, animated well, dinosaurs hold on, on a train. Hold on, James. Hypothesis is not a four letter word. We have eight year olds. Oh, but you see. Dinosaur train for eight-year-olds. So I'm sort of just passing on the learning experience towards our audience as well. That's true. That's true. Um, oh, you remember that that uh, the dinosaur movie and it was on like cassette. You remember? was it the the Dino Riders? What is Dino Riders? Well, I'm glad you could ask. This is a this is a VHS is what you mean by cassette. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, I'm I'm too. Yeah, you're, I'm you're such a Gen Z. -er. <laughs> sorry, you're a little young. But uh, Dino Riders is like a thing my dad watched and I watched, and it was they land on an island, I think, and then there's good guys and bad guys. Do, and, do they ride? And wouldn't you guess that they build 
like little guns and stuff and mount it to the dinosaurs. No, I don't know if this is and kid friendly. No, it is. It's a cartoon. No, nobody dies. I don't think. There's weapons. It's fine. Of mass destruction. No, not that mass destruction because they keep missing. A, they miss a lot. Is there war? <laughs> you're you're missing the point here. Is it's, there war crimes? No, like what's happening in no, this? It's, I think we need to like. Get there's in good depth. dinosaurs and then there's bad dinosaurs. And the good dinosaurs, the bad guys have a T-Rex, and the good guys don't have a T-Rex. I remember that. I think the good guys have all the herbivores, and the bad guys have all the the carnivores. you know what that sounds like? What? Transformers. See, this is the thing. It was so similar to Transformers, because they have, like, the dinosaurs have mech suits that, like, like, not mech suits, but, like, they have, like, a mech saddle with guns attached to it. And then the people ride the dinosaurs, dino riders, and then they shoot lasers, and they miss a lot because it's an old, I think, 80s cartoon, and they so nobody nobody's allowed to die or get hurt. So everything is them missing all the shots, I think. This, I watched this a long time ago. Dude, I mean, at this point, though, like, how do you know? It, maybe that was also a lucid dream. You know, you ever thought I can, about that? I can that? verify that that's not a lucid dream. Really? That's what my dad watches every night before bed to help him go to bed. The dino Riders? Yeah. He watches that. No, he doesn't. That was a joke. Oh, you got me there. Yeah. Audience, that's how you do a joke right there. Ba-doom. Hold on, wait. We can we can do that noise. Oh yeah. This is Allegra from Mama oh. and you're listening Oops, to I hit the wrong button. Yeah, it's not the noise. Yeah. Uh it's close. You're on you're on to it. Okay. What is that sound called? What's the name of that? Um I don't know. Is it is like it this drum? One? Look up drum. Oh no! Oh, here you go. I found it. All right, every, pretend everybody. Pretend I just made that joke again. All right, should we do it again? Or no, no it's okay. let's just. Pre- oh, wait, is, wait, wait. Should, wait, wait. You should get it. What do you think? I, well, the audience is a bunch no. of eight year olds, and eight year olds have good imaginations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait! Whoops! The wrong one. Well, I don't know if they have it. Um, who has it? Uh, I don't see it on the sound effects. Okay. Uh, you know, do you, I'm still thinking about Dino Riders. Yeah, great movie. I think it's right up your alley too. Yeah, I've never heard of this, and and then the connection between Transformers. Like, what if Transformers, you know, in the fourth one, great movie, fourth Transformers, when they introduced dinosaurs, was that a direct ripoff of Dino Riders? Like, I don't well, know. Well, Transformers in itself is a ripoff of something else. There was things before Transformers that Transformers ripped off. Oh, is it kind of like, um, like when people rip off uh, Fortnite? See, that's too young for me. I don't know about that. Like, when in real life, they made like an actual um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, which they ripped off from um, Fortnite. Hmm. I mean, I didn't know they had, I didn't know rocks came Dude. from Fortnite. Yeah, this rock, this rock's name, though, is Dwayne. So oh, don't forget that. Okay, okay. Speaking of Transformers, though, Dino, uh, do you, have you seen the old Transformers cartoon movie? The tra- old Transformers cartoon movie on VHS? Uh, I, don't know, I saw the show, not the movie. I know in the movie, like, uh, spoilers, like, I think people, like... Wait, wait, hold on, let's, let's give a little break in case people want to time back off. We're gonna, the next, like, minute or two will be spoilers for the Transformers cartoon movie that is very old, so admittedly, you should have seen it by now. All my audience... This is like right up my audience's alley too. Is this kind of stuff? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I think like am I allowed to say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to clarify if I if I could say the word D I E. Just just got word. Aaron said yes. So as I was saying, I think a lot of Transformers die in that one. See, th- I watched that a long time ago. I don't remember if they do, but you never watched it. No, but like I, as a transformer, I'm insufferable. Okay, 
I watch. You're a Die Hard Transformers fan, and you don't know this. You haven't seen this one. No, but I can make up for it. I watch an unnecessary amount of Transformer YouTube videos, like an excessive amount. What is what is they, it? They like analyze Transformers and go into depth of like the philosophy and how like and how great it is. And I, 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 you know, I'm going to call you out right now. I saw you, you know, do a little, like a snicker over there and like a little giggle. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's very appropriate when we're talking about Transformers, one of the greatest. My bad. I forgot our audience also loves Transformers. They would not laugh at that. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is serious talk. Yeah. Like, like when Op- versus evil, like when Optimus is giving his speech, nobody laughs. You're inspired. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Um, You know, I do have to clarify, though. Transformer movies, all of them are great, first of all. But second of all, they did go a little too far sometimes. You know the second one? I've only seen the first one. That's Aaron, live I'm action. I'm disappointed. Okay, the second one. You have the pyramids. Okay, I like pyramids. Revenge of the Fallen. Okay, it sounds like Star Wars. Yeah, it kind of does. Maybe Transformers maybe, ripped yeah, off Star Wars. Maybe they ripped off Star Wars. Okay. Um, and then they have these two characters. <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's not talk about how the Transformers. Uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. But they said bad things. Well, there's two characters in the second movie. Um, they're like, one's orange and one's green. You know, to all my viewers, I've seen that movie. They're, they're, they're not good, right? They're yeah, not they're good not ones. good. Yeah. Um, I wish Michael Bay didn't do that. But everything else, I think Michael Bay is a great director. Honestly, I would put him up there with like... Here, let's play the name of director game. Okay. Name me, name me a, a, like a really good director. A really good director? Yeah, go. For real. Be serious. Like you want me to do, you want me to like be serious. Yeah. Oh, hold on here. I'll start off. Tarkovsky, better. Go ahead. Stanley Kubrick. Better than Stanley Kubrick. Oh, by far. The, the father of cinema. Michael Bay is better than Stanley Kubrick. Like who, who watches Stanley Kubrick? Hey. Hey, eight-year-old audience, who watches Stanley Kubrick? No one. We watch Boom, Explosion. Oh, well, I got a good one. The guy that made the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. He drives. Yeah. I know I know. for my one of my listeners, uh, Hudson's favorite movie is Drive. I know that for a fact. He told me, he's like, listen, Aaron, my favorite movie is Drive when Ryan Gosling says, yeah, I kind of drive. He says that. Oh, is that what happens? Yeah, that's that's the main part of it. That's like the... And then he goes, yeah, I kind of drive. And then he looks at the camera and winks. <laughs> because he just, he, he just named the name of the movie, right? Uh, okay. And then he crashes his car. That's how the movie ends. Oh, but... Oh, spoilers, my oh, bad. He, yeah. I, I was about to get, like, a little mad. Not about the spoilers. Like, that's okay. Yeah. But I was a bit worried, like, if he crashed it, then... Well, why would the movie... The movie can't be called Drive if you crash the car in the beginning. You know, there has to be driving. Well, he drives into the, the wall that he crashes into. Oh, is there, like, fatalities? Uh, No, it's a happy... He gets out and then goes on and does Barbie. Oh, uh, and he Which does, like, a com- little wink again? Yeah, like, he does a little wink again. He says... Drive. And then it and, like credits and it goes, uh, Ryan Gosling will reappear in Barbie in 20... 20- 23 summer of 2023 which this movie drive came out like a couple years ago several years ago yeah like when our audience was what maybe three yeah so catch up audience you know watch that movie yeah it's a pretty good movie he he says yeah i'm kind of a driver i like to drive and then you know we don't yeah I like to drive, kind of like that. Is yeah, that how he delivers yeah. it, then, or how? How? Show me. How did he well, deliver it? Okay, let's. We we've we've gone over this, but let's talk about the other cool part. Is he has a really cool jacket. I advise everybody, if you don't, go and buy a buy a drive jacket right now. Because it has a cool scorpion on the back, and it's white, 
it's pretty cool. Does does it say like drive anywhere on it though? No, like, but yeah, it's, I like to drive. It's implied. And when you put the jacket on, you can't stop saying drive. You keep mentioning like anytime somebody talks to you, you always are bringing that up in conversation. Somebody's like, "Hey, how's it going?" And you go, "Oh, yeah, I drive." And they yeah. s- and, yeah. and yeah. they crave for like the icebreakers, and they're like, "Oh, what do you like to do?" It's like, <laughs> "Yeah, I like to drive." And yeah. he has a little wink. But actually, let's talk about things. Talking about Ryan Gosling, uh, the prequel to Drive, which is kind of weird because it's set in the future, but it's not. Well, is there a trilogy? The, well, yeah, uh, wow. Blade Runner twenty forty nine is the oh. prequel to Drive. No, are you sure it's on the sequel? Well, he, Barbie comes next after Drive. I thought. No, oh no, no! I think it's just in chronological order. I think you got to. I think it's Drive, Barbie, then Blade Runner. Then Blade Runner. So this is like the middle movie that we don't know what happens. How he gets from driving to Blade Runnering stuff. Yeah, because I mean he's he's basically us. So we're gonna find out a lot. Yeah. How like how that's how he happen. gets from a white jack, really cool white jacket with a scorpion on the back, with another really cool jacket that's different. With like the popped collar. Yeah. And if you have that jacket, that makes you really cool. And you talk about how yeah, I run blades. Ooh. Wait, no, that's not what he says. No. What does he say? Um, I like yeah, I like blades, mm. and I like to run. Because he crashed his car, so he can't drive anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And he says, "My name's Ryan Gosling. I'm gonna be in this movie, Blade Runner 2049. I hope you enjoy." And then winks at the camera. More movies should do what Ryan Gosling is doing. Yeah, I with think his so. Script. Yeah, I think so too. Man, I am so excited for Barbie. I can't tell you how excited. That's like my most looking forward to movie. Look, look movie I'm looking forward to right now. I don't know, dude. There's no Transformers movies coming out before that, so. Yeah, but as a Transformer, <laughs> I like that little shrug. But as a Transformers fan, you always anticipate a movie on the horizon. Like, so I'm always looking at that. Doesn't matter what other movie is oh, confirmed to come gotcha, out. Gotcha, gotcha. Which you know, which the newest Transformer movie is, right? As a Transformers fan. Because I know what it is. Yeah. It's um, it's a Transformers Safari. That's actually kind of close. It's Transformers Beast Wars. Yeah. You didn't let me finish my sentence. Oh. I, was about to, I was about to say that. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, okay. You know what movie we need to watch? I was just thinking about we We together, we watched Angry Birds, the movie. A brilliant movie. Like a master class of a movie. Yeah, there's birds in it. And guess what? What what happens to them? They're angry. Oh man, that's that's a recipe for a good movie. But what uh, Angry Birds 2, we don't even know what happens in there. We have no idea. Yeah, I don't know what the birds are going to be doing. Are they maybe they'll be angry twice? I don't know. How does that work? I don't know. Like I haven't seen the movie so I wouldn't know, dude. Yeah. But I really liked Angry Birds and I thought it was funny. Uh yeah. So all you eight-year-olds that want to be cunning comedians, go watch that movie. Go watch that movie. Watch the scene or watch every moment where there's an eagle in it. Yes. yes. I can't we explain know. the yes. scene, okay? I, that I'm, scene is the funniest thing that came out of that movie. Yep. So funny. I don't even honestly remember the rest of the movie. And w- w- I don't, I don't, uh, we don't want to spoil that, what happens. Yeah, and technically we... Can't, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. It's not like, yeah, it's just so funny. Um, we were laughing for so long. Yeah, you're actually. Yeah, that's so right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So we need to. We need to finish that one. Dude, the the one guy that the like that blows up. That guy is funny. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. I, I I honestly I think he just blows up. Right. That's all he does. Yeah, and then he's like. Once he blows up, like then he's like gone for the rest of like I think maybe he passed well, away. I don't I don't think so. I think it was like teaching kids a lesson about not blowing up. Yeah, and the conse- yeah, yeah. Consequences of it. Yeah, sometimes when you're anger, you know, angry birds. Sometimes if you're a bird, it's okay to be angry, but like us people, not okay to be angry all the time. I mean, yeah. I get angry when my ice cream is. Uh, 
That's, that's not true. I get angry when I don't get lasagna. Yeah, lasagna. Yeah, I get angry when somebody says, hey, your drive jacket doesn't look that cool on you. And I say, you don't look that cool. And then I drive away. Take and then, that. And then you say, yeah, I like to drive. And then you wink at them and you leave. Yeah. And you get the upper hand by doing that. That doesn't happen because I don't see anybody. Because they people leave me alone. I, probably because I'm so cool with my drive jacket. People are intimidated because how cool you are. That's why they leave you alone. Mm -hmm. See, this is like some of those lessons that our eight-year-olds need to learn. Mm -hmm. Is that like if people don't talk to you, it's because like they have much respect and they think you're awesome. Yeah. And also just, because you yeah. need to shower, but... Yeah, but that's like that's just a side effect of being awesome and mm -hmm. cool and. Uh, well, yeah. I know for a fact when my listeners doesn't shower. For uh, sorry, I uh, for weeks at a time. I mean, he's just on that grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what he's grinding his teeth down in his sleep. Maybe I don't know. Mm, maybe like, maybe not literal grounding. Maybe like. What is it? Would it be metaphorically? Grinding? I don't know. Because you can grind metal down. I've done that before. Oh, yeah. It gets really hot. Yeah, like, ouch. Yeah, and then I burned myself. I was like, ouch. That's hot. Yeah. I mean. I'm Ryan Gosling, and that was hot. I'm not Is actually, that from the Barbie movie? Maybe. We, we'll have to see. Uh, I think it's in June or July. It's one of those two months. It's one of the J months. See, you know. Like I said earlier about like writing notes down while we're talking, mm -hmm. audience members, like this is something. Pull out your agenda book. Look up the date Barbie comes out because you bet we're going to be talking about it the Friday after that. Yeah. Yep. Well, we might actually get sponsored to go watch it because we're that big and famous. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you noted, yeah, getting sponsored. But don't forget, you have ties with Ryan Gosling, right? I do. I thought you. I thought you. Wait, I mean, I'm I literally you him. Me. Are you? Yeah. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, oh. that's just a figure of speech you use when you just. Yeah. Oh, but wait, you're not. I'm not. You're no. not him, though. No. You're, I, you're look, I look like a lot like Ryan Gosling. People say that to me all the time. They say, "Wow, you look a lot like Ryan Gosling." And then, don't you get Jake Gyllenhaal? Oh, yeah, I get a lot of... J they're like, dude, aren't you from Prisoners? And I'm like... I, I don't think that's a movie for our eight-year-old's listeners to listen to watch. It teaches good life lessons. Let's think. That's about. true. What, what's a good movie that he's been in that, like, our eight-year-old listeners could watch? Um, I do know he was in a movie, Ambulance, directed by Michael Bay. As a Michael Bay lover, yeah, I've seen that movie. And if you're going to ask me, well, James, what was it about? It was about ambulances. So. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I've only seen the trailer, and there is an ambulance in the trailer, so you're right. You, mu you must have seen about it. About ambulances, and they drive. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, what's uh, Southpaw, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. I That's a good kids movie. That, Southpaw. No, 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 no. It uh, sounds like a kids movie, like... Oh, like South and like the paw of like a polar bear or something. Like, oh my gosh, it's like a Christmas yeah. movie or something. Polar bears are pretty scary. Polar bears, scary. Also, two things to note. Polar bears are in Minecraft. That's kind of crazy. That's Second crazy. thing, that's a side note. Also, did you ever watch like the animated uh, polar bear movie that came out in like 20, I don't know, 18? No. It was like really bad. Like laughably bad you know it must have not been directed by michael bay exactly thank you yeah and it was by like some studio that was just it was like bad animation too hmm. just well you know, i mean shrek has bad animation and it did go no. no wait i think it's like no i i think uh-uh uh, you're wrong shrek is awesome no i'm not saying shrek is bad i'm saying it didn't have shrek, great dude shrek animations beautiful have you ever seen Fiona? Yeah, I didn't like. Okay, never mind. We're not good. Dragon. The way they animated. I think we're gonna disagree on this one because Shrek. It was a good movie. The part that I didn't like is when Fiona, I think it is, starts screaming and the birds explode. It made me uncomfortable. 
that happens in Tintin. See, that's what our audience would have definitely seen. Tintin. Hey, come in, come into the comments and say if you've seen Tintin. Yeah, the comments of this <laughs> live broadcast. Good one, James. Good one. Get trolled, audience members. I think it might be time for a little break. What do you, what do you say? A little, little, a little drink of water. It's almost top of the hour, two minutes till top of the hour. You, you have refused to give me any form of water so far. Yeah, you don't get water. So this is a lie? I get water. You don't. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick little break, and we will be back whenever we're back. And we are back with the second half of the Aaron Hour, the second hour of the Aaron Hour. Um, we've decided to read some stories that I wrote a long time ago. Not yet a best-selling author, Aaron. Me, that's me, Aaron. These are things I wrote a while back. Uh, still great, though. Anyways, let's continue. Let's go. Let's get on with it. A story about a guy named Bob. Bob walked and walked. No matter he where he tried to go, he went nowhere. He tried every direction, all the directions, actually, up, down, just two directions, north, south, east, and west. It was all the same. When Bob could move and go places, he always wanted one thing, to stop and take a rest. He always wanted a rest, but he was, also, he was always so busy. Then something changed for Bob. People started to notice him. People saw him and wished they could be like him. They said, I want a break that lasts forever. That would be awesome, just sitting all day long, resting and chilling. That would be awesome. They would never be able to comprehend the boredom that Bob feels every day, sitting down, able to do nothing. He told everybody that came near him the same thing. He said, how would you like to spend the rest of your life with nowhere to go, no things to do, and no places to see? Bob hated being stuck. Stuck. He wished he had used his old life better, like exploring the earth and helping more people. Bob vowed after days of thinking that if he ever got free again, he would spend his life wisely, helping other people and exploring the earth. But he didn't get free again. That's that story about Bob. I feel bad for Bob. Yeah, I know. Bob was kind of a real jerk before that. That's the backstory. I don't write the back. I didn't write the backstory in oh, here, but they, he's a real they, jerk. Now you need to like write the prequel to it, the origins uh, of Bob. Origins of Bob about how he took other people's Transformers movies. Okay, you didn't tell me about that though. No, yeah. Okay, maybe now I'm I'm more on your side. Okay, we were gonna read some more, but I actually want to bring some. Did you ever play the Transformers video games? No, but I know you did. You played on PlayStation. Yeah, they're pretty good. You can't get them anymore either. Oh, I heard. Yeah, yeah I heard. No, you told me. Oh, we talked about this already. Yeah, you're like, oh, you need a code to like play. Oh yeah, I remember this conversation. <laughs> yeah, we're back to it. We're just repeating ourselves over and over again. I mean, yeah, that's how it is. All right, do you want to read a story about mice? Yeah, and then another story about. An epic adventure. Don't hate, hey, don't spoil. No spoilers. Okay, here you go. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. That was planned. Uh, okay. Mice. A poetic story. Now, if there's anything in there that you shouldn't say, don't say it. Uh, I'll try my best to filter. <clears throat> okay. I once went into this house and in it... What did I find? But mice. A horde of mice were living there. They were quite nice to me. They had the best manners I had ever seen. They said, good day to you. And do you perhaps have some cheese? I said, I may. And what, and what do you, uh, and what do you now but... From my pocket, I pulled out a slice of cheese. The mice were quite delighted and thanked me for their dinner. I said, don't mention it. And they said, come back again. Right before I left, they said, won't you come back tomorrow? We want a guest to stay and maybe take a rest. 
I thought about it, and I said, I may. Later that day, when I went to eat my sandwich in my pocket, I noticed that there was no cheese in it at all. I was very surprised and said, oh my. I fed the mice pepper jack. I bet they won't be as nice of mice to me anymore. That was a great story. I would say thank you, but it is not my story. Uh, so. Thank you. So that was a great story. Yeah, yeah. Great telling of that story. Uh, sorry. Narration. Narration. Yeah. yeah. It's not only really narration if you're reading the story, then that's not a like maybe uh, that is that a narrator? Yeah, well when you go on like a Kindle and they read it to like you. Like kindling? For fire? Oh wait, kindling. Fire? Fire's pretty cool. Like it goes burn. It's like yeah, whoa. And you, like your wood, it kind of like disappears. Yeah. And I, and then like some things burn and some things don't, and then you have to you throw them in the fire to see if they burn and they don't burn. Yeah, and then sometimes like it gets really big. Yeah. And then they're like, but then like sometimes like you can't control it, and then it's like, well, I got oh. I got something cool. What happens? Because you know, a one match makes one little fire, right? Yeah, one match can make a fire. That what happens correct. if you use more than one match? Is that a bigger fire? What if you use the whole box? I, I, yeah, I think that's what, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I think that's what happens when you have a big fire. It's because people put lots of matches into it. Like, um, like catastrophes, catastrophic events, mm -hmm. I think are just because people threw in a bunch of matches on accident. But that sounds cool. Yeah, it does sound cool, but... Well, I, uh, okay, uh, I'm not going to read any more stories. I just looked at the next one. It doesn't look very good. Oh. Because it, because it wasn't written by me. It was written by uh, my ghost writer. Oh, you have a ghost writer? Yeah, he's kind of a ghost that writes for me. Uh, which he, He's not a scary one. Wait, if he's a ghost, how do you know he, like... Because I'll be sitting at my computer, right? And then next, I'll look at the screen and be like, wow, that's really bad. I must have not written that, so it must have been a ghost. That's actually so, yeah. The ghost that also, explains so much for me. The ghost also has the same name as I do because it signs everything that it writes. Aaron Kemper. That maybe you have a ghostwriter too, then, dude. That explains so much. Like when when my professor like reads my paper and then they give it back to me and then they have like a personal conference with me and they're like, James, this is bad now i could just be like dude it wasn't me it was the ghost i didn't write that i didn't write that I didn't write it, it was the ghost yeah. named james yeah i don't know why the ghost named james wrote uh 200 pages about transformers when you know this is supposed to be a five-page paper about the history of the turkish empire i, I don't know why ghosts are interesting i you're spot on with that I don't know why the uh, ghost named Aaron wrote a cookbook about the best way to make enchiladas when we were supposed to write a, a, about, uh, I don't know, Pride and Prejudice. Mm. Strange. Well, okay, my eight-year-old listeners, this is all going to go above your head. Our Pride and Prejudice is a great book for all my over eight-year-old listeners. But you it's, don't have any of those. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's true. Once you, okay, eight year old listeners, once you become a little over eight, once you become like nine, read Pride and Prejudice. It's a very funny book, and I'm not joking here. I, see, you know, it's when really I, funny. When I think we're talking about topics that might not pertain to them. Okay, it's my bad. Yeah. Um, what we, it's not your bad. Okay. This is a learning moment. I think that maybe we need to like ease our way in and like bring, um, before we say like the super big concept, mm -hmm. like, um, say something that runs their brain a little bit, like, like, woo, woo, fire truck, and Whoa. then get into the, con cause then they're like captivated. They're yeah. like, Oh, what was that? I like fire trucks. Fire. <laughs> Someone say fire truck. Whoa. That's <gasps> cool. And then you say pride and prejudice. And they're like, Oh, interesting. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a memory trick, right? Uh, relating one thing to another thing. Oh Yeah. And then you, once you say fire truck, you remember Pride and Prejudice. Oh. Because I remember there's uh, yeah. there's songs that relate to certain things. 
Oh, those are... Like, there's this one uh, Imagine Dragons song that I relate to a Transformers fight scene because the I watched on YouTube a compilation of all the Transformers fight scenes from the movies, and I had Imagine Dragons, one of their songs, back when I liked them uh, in high school, and I remember it overlaid. Under, so, yeah. Uh, or how does it go? I'm a believer. Was it like that? No, You're it wasn't like, that one. Yeah. No, it wasn't that one. I'm a believer. It may have been that one. And then, yeah, yeah, I think it was that one. But your voice is just not as good as Mr. Imagine Dragon himself. I mean, that kind of hurt a little bit, but... Yeah, well, I mean, he... Mr. Wait. Oh, he's uh, he's imagining himself as a dragon, so you're not doing that. So that's why your <laughs> voice doesn't sound as good. You got me there. He has the lung capacity of a dragon. He, or at least that's what he's imagining. Yeah. And, you oh. know, conceive, believe, achieve... If you can conceive it, you can believe it, and you can achieve it. Dude, remember what I said earlier? Like, Oh, big words. Ease yeah. into it. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can do anything, eight-year-old kids. You can do anything you put your mind to. Huh? Your mind is uh, your mind. That's what <gasps> it is. <gasps> uh, well, you know, good thing bringing up fire trucks. Actually, a lot of our listeners have been requesting we talk about trucks. No, I'm not a big... Bulldozer. Oh, see, I like bulldozers. Okay, let's talk about our favorite uh, construction uh, thingies, equipment things. Mine's a grader. A grader is one of those. You, James is giving me a weird look. He clearly doesn't like, know what it. He's not a. Oh, gr- like the one where like you get um, cheese and you go. Okay, that's one of the graders. I don't prefer to grate my cheese. I just eat it. Oh, by Bach. Yeah. My, by block. Like Minecraft. By like pound blocks. Half pound, pound. Hum, nom, 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 nom. Minecraft. Yeah, I don't think you can have cheese in Minecraft. That sounded like Minecraft. You can't. Oh, the cheese. You're eating this. Okay, cheese is added in mods, Mine, but not. Minecraft. Uh, okay. Uh, graders are the thingy where they have a little thing. So they have the wheels up front, wheels in the back, and in between they have a long thing, and they have like the thing that moves. Do they and, grate? And they, they kind of push the dirt. Maybe maybe I'll bring maybe I'll bring uh, a a one that I can I can I can be like I'll bring one my uh, my audio listeners which is everyone here won't be able to see it but it'll be, help me describe it better. Yeah, drive it into this area. No, because I can't. I don't. I'm not licensed to drive it. I'm not forklift certified or radar certified. Oh. What's your favorite construction equipment thing? Bulldozer. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, I think there's a transformer that transformed from a bald of bald over bald bulldozer. <laughs> it is a transformer. And you know what? This is pretty cool. All right, audience listeners, if you are ever driving from Corvallis to Salem, because you're going from Corvallis to Salem, if you you'll look to your right, and if you look to your right, you'll go past this big giant dirt pit in the thing, and there is an actual Decepticon there. A dump truck Decepticon. What? You know how I know it's a Decepticon? Because it has a Decepticon symbol on it. And it is green. like a, So it's a Constructicon. It's not only just, it's not just a Decepticon. It is a Constructicon because it is a construction one. And it's a big dump truck and it's off to the right. It looks awesome. Do you ever get nervous going past it? Uh, I, I pay the fee. I pay the toll. Oh, so he won't mess with you? Yeah, yeah. Or she? I don't know. It's I a Constructicon. Know. Wait. Now that you think about it, Transformers, guys, where are the women Transformers? Well, to answer that question, you clearly haven't seen Bumblebee. Wait. Because I have seen the trailer for Bumblebee, and there's a girl Transformer in it, in the trailer. Just the trailer. I, no, no. Uh, just in the trailer, yeah. No, there is. I'm sorry. I know you're not up to date with Transformers lore. Yeah. But I know for sure in the second one, there is there's a um, there's like a a motorcycle one, but then she like she has like five seconds of screen time and then dies. Um The second Bumblebee movie. No, the second Transformer movie, sorry. Oh with the pyramids again. We're back to the pyramids. Oh, okay. And we're back to the Revenge of the Fallen, which sounds like a, which is a, a Star Wars ripoff. Mm-hmm. We all know that. Um, but Star Wars ripped off of uh, 
Um, real life. Star Star Wars is ripped off of real life. Yes. Did you know in the old Transformers cartoons they have what is basically a lightsaber, but they can't call it a lightsaber due to uh, copyright reasons because this came out like shortly after Star Wars. You know the Transformers cartoon that that specific episode, so they call it a laser sword. And I just remember that it was so silly. I was like, just call it a lightsaber, and they can't because it's Star Wars copyright. But laser sword. And, you know, and it looked like a lightsaber, but it's laser sword. And, I don't, I don't know if everyone is just going to be like... Like, I don't think... Imagine a world where there's no Star Wars. And you see, like, a wand... Or you see this beam of light come out of this, like, handle. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't think everyone's going to be like, oh, that's a lightsaber. I'll think, hey, that looks like a lot like a saber, the sword, made no, out of light. No. That must be see, a lightsaber. You jumped from one to another. So let's go back. You said that looks like a sword. Yeah, but so the specific saber. kind no, of sword. No, but we go to sword. I think it's just sword. And because we, it doesn't look like a, uh, it doesn't look like one of those two hand uh, swords. I forgot the name of the Zweihander sword. It doesn't look like a claymore. I know my swords. It's not like that. It's no. That's no claymore right claymore? there. Claymore? That's like a sword the one that explodes. No, that's a sword too. It's an old uh, Irish sword, if I'm not mistaken. It has the Y grip, where the 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 the. the I think it's the pommel. I don't remember. It, it sticks out like a Y. I think. You know. There's the two-handed swords. The that's the ones the knights use. The big two-handed ones. There's dirt. Wait. Yeah. Did you say knights? Yeah. Knights is in Transformers Five. Did you know that? King. Well, this is. So you're Lord- telling me. You're telling me King Arthur was actually from from Transformers. King Arthur, um, is rip was ripped off from Transformers. Um, King Arthur. Yeah, that's that's what I have to say. Is that we took it from Transformers. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And, um. You know, I was about to say, try, never mind. Okay. Um, you know, next week we're gonna we're not gonna be able to talk about Transformers anymore because we've talked about it so much. I have to come in with another Michael Bay movie like the Six Underground. Ambulance. Okay. Woo woo. I think you, you you'll watch the trailer and realize that that's not what that's about. Maybe you maybe maybe your ghost saw that movie, not you, because uh, I don't know, maybe. Six Underground with Ryan Reynolds. Um, that's a that's a Michael Bay movie, Netflix original. So Six Underground, um, are they underground? Oh, it's the one where they're underground. I have no idea. I just saw the trailer and I oh, all I've I saw seen, was I've a, seen it. It was a car exploding They're and Ryan Reynolds was going, Haha, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Did he wink like Ryan Gosling? Well he's not Ryan Gosling, so he winked like he winked like Ryan Reynolds, but not like Ryan Gosling. Two different people. Mm, yeah. That's a fair point. Well, actually, I to, you know, I saw something recently. Uh hold on. Let me let me double check and just get the name exactly right on this. I saw something and it was. Uh, oh, I can keep their attention. No, I, I got. It. Oh, you got I, it. I got. I got. It. We're, we're all good here. We're all good here. Uh, heavy rescue. Like, uh, let's take some guesses. What do we think heavy rescue means? What are we rescuing? Something heavy. Yeah, I agree with that. Because when I thought that, I was like, are we rescuing? Let's say, let's say a whole bunch of food that was really heavy got dropped. Are we rescuing it from the ground and the ants? That's what that was my mind jump. My mind jumped to. What what does your mind jump to when you think of heavy rescue? Um. Like oh, you know what it reminds me of, that scene, where um. Um, where Megatron is frozen in the first Transformers, and well, they had to do a heavy rescue and get him out. You know, he's that, heavy because he's big metal. What? Okay, talking Transformers. Let, let, let's do. We'll do some clues to figure this out. What kind of transformer is Optimus Prime? What? What does he transform into? Truck. Yeah, but what kind of truck? Semi. 
semi truck. I don't get why it's a semi truck. Mm. That, that semi doesn't make any sense. Do, yeah, because if you're saying semi, it's like part. It's yeah. almost saying like part, like partially. Yeah, yeah. So, what's partial? What's about a full like, truck? Yeah, what is a full truck? Maybe that's a train. Maybe a full truck is a train. Anyways, Heavy Rescue is for rescuing semi-trucks. I just saw that ad on TV while I was at the gym before this, and I thought, huh, that's interesting. That was really interesting. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. Man, the stuff they show on TV these days is, <clears throat> let's just say, everybody, I guess, is an eight-year-old with the, the, the way they show things. I really want to get an advertising person as a guest on here. Listen, my six viewers, if you guys know anybody that's... That's generous. Four viewers. <laughs> if you guys know anybody that's in marketing and advertisement, tell them to come on here. In fact, if you guys know somebody that's interesting, that knows a lot about marketing or advertising, but like, what, what are the other things we want to talk about? Um, I like food. If we know somebody that knows a lot about food... Um, maybe we should circle back to the, cause I mean, trucks, trucks, that's a good point. Circle back also. Um, I mean, didn't you mention like something about, uh, the Turkish empire? So like maybe, maybe like a, someone who knows a bit about history about like the Ottoman empire, yeah. um, Turkish What's empires. What's the deal with the Ottomans? Yeah. Like, uh, good point. I mean, I, I, just, I sit on them. I sit on an Ottoman. Oh, the, the the furniture. Yeah, but uh, listen, if you know any marketing advertising experts, my three listeners, please tell them to come our way. Me and James are expert interviewers. James, you actually interviewed Michael Bay, right? The footage never famously, yeah, yeah. The footage was somehow corrupted, but <laughs> and the audio files were and audio about. files are corrupted too as well. So you have to take. I mean, well, you know, yeah, but these. Our audience has to just take my word, I guess. Yeah, because you were like, yeah, I interviewed Michael Bay. And I said, really? And you're like, yeah, I did. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's my conversation started for the most part. Yeah. Listen, you don't know who I am, but I've interviewed Michael Bay. For real. That happened. Right? That's how that goes? Yeah. Oh, oh do you know that? Because I did it on you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You actually did that to me when you were a, a two-year-old. Oh, oh, wait. I interviewed him when I was. When you're you interviewed him when you were one. Because you could talk by then. Oh yeah, I, I mean that's why that explains why I'm like known to be like extremely um, smart, educated, cunning, handsome, cunning. Um, well, we both are, right? Um, cunning, smart, but, um, I mean, that's why I'd, I advance, you know, guys, I don't know if they know this, but you know, I went to college, but what, how old was I? I was in college. Well, see, the thing is, is aren't you still in college? Didn't you like go to college when you're like 10 and it's taken you, what are you, you're, uh, what are you 13 now? Yeah. So you've been in college for three years now? Three three years. Um, I mean, I am working. I already did my undergraduate, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm on to my graduate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's better than me. I'm a, a 75. Oh, a 75, yeah. <laughs> See, guys, take notes right there. That was a joke. I'm not actually 75. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know how old I am. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it's really hard to remember. I know it has... No. Yeah, I, I don't know. I try to do the math in my head, and I just can't figure it out. Well, it looks like it's time for a nice commercial break. All right. We're back. While we were uh, gone... We uh, talked about some really exciting things. We're not going to tell you what they are, though. Intellectual things. Yeah. Eight-year-olds can't understand them. 
We yeah. can understand. We can, we can understand them. We're not eight. Yep. Um. Well, I could be eight for all I know. I don't know how old I am, but. Fair, fair point. I know, you know. Speaking of things to talk about, when I was eating my pumpkin bread, mm-hmm. and then you made the comment about bakery in my car. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know. I don't know if I appreciated that. Are you insinuating something? I, I was just saying it sounds like you have a lot of bread and <laughs> cooked baked goods in your car. Not insinuating anything. I don't know why you have to take it that way. Sorry, I'm just that's my bad. But Yeah, I, that that is your bad. Yeah, that is. Hey. No, you're supposed to say, Oh no, it's okay. That's no, no, that's your say. bad. That was your bad. That wasn't my See, bad. That's not the appropriate, polite, mm. courteous, yeah, well, oh well, adequate, mm. respectful yeah. response. Yeah, well, yeah, it it wasn't my bad though. See now, I think it was your bad. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you should say my bad. No. Okay. Well, back to my pumpkins. I'm good. Thank you. No. Nope. Let me. Back to my pumpkins. Thank you. Pumpkin yeah. bread. And that's which is your bad. So, pumpkins. What's up with pumpkins? What's the deal with pumpkins? Thank you. That's that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Um. You know, I was thinking. I was in my car. First thing that went to my mind, of course. Jack o' lanterns, which are from um, Minecraft. Um, when you put a torch inside a pumpkin and you carve out the pumpkin with um, with shears. Um, but imagine you are cut off the roots. You, you are a root. You're a person. You are you. And you're rooted to this ecosystem. And then some large entity that is like more advanced than you. Cuts you off from the ecosystem. And you're like, hey, hey, I'm a pumpkin. Hey, I'm just a pumpkin. And they cut you off, right? Mm-hmm. And they take you. And then they put you in a wheelbarrow. And you're like, hey, I'm just a pumpkin. And then they take you. And then there's like a bunch of probably like children and stuff. And they take you. And you mean a bunch of our listeners. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. And it's probably like a fall day or something. Yeah. And then they take you home. And you're just like, hey, what? I'm just a pumpkin. And then they take out a sharp knife or a sharp object. It's, oh, yeah, it's just a sharp object. Whatever cutlery. And you've already experienced this trauma of being ripped away from your ecosystem with your friends, your family. And at the bare minimum, it like imagine you're taken away from everything you love and you're like, well, at least... Let me have myself like go towards something like, you know, like when you're a gazelle and you get taken by the lion, taken down, like at least your meat is going towards that. Like he's, he's like, I'm not hungry. Uh, I'm no longer hungry. So you went, you had a purpose, but a pumpkin. In October, a pumpkin, you get carved up. And then that's it. They they don't eat you. Well, yeah. Who eats pumpkins? They don't eat you. They just carve you up, and then you leave. You're left out to rot, and that's a pumpkin's life. What if your life was a pumpkin in October? And you're uh, like, hey, I'm just a pumpkin. Is that the noise pumpkins make? Famously, yeah. Hey, I'm just a pumpkin. Yes. Huh. I didn't know that. Does that not make you sad about pumpkin lives? I I don't like carving pumpkins either. And I don't like pumpkin pie, which is like pumpkins being used for a purpose. Yeah, people don't eat pumpkins. The pumpkin pie isn't pumpkin pie. Pumpkin that's pie. its own like that's separate. Not made, that's not made from those pumpkins. Yeah, we don't want to get into that. But okay. pumpkin pie isn't real pumpkin. That's, no one actually eats pumpkins, as I that's, said. That's pumpkin lore. You know a lot about pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I studied a lot. Um, you know, that's actually one of my side majors. Um, as I've been getting, you know, my undergraduate, my graduate at 13 years old, 
Um, pumpkins are like really interesting to you. Pumpkins are interesting, yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. to me, they shouldn't just be interesting to me. You know, I think they should be taught world worldwide in classrooms about the significance of pumpkins. I mean, what do they do? How do they help anything? They just sit there and go, "I'm a pumpkin." Hey, I'm a pumpkin. Like, and correct me if I'm wrong. Once we pick the pumpkin, doesn't another pumpkin grow? You know, I haven't gotten that far enough in my oh, studies, okay. so that's my bad. Okay, yeah. But you, your understanding of that, well, right? Well, uh, the thing is, right, I disagree. Pumpkins, you say pumpkins aren't being used for anything, but they just sit out there and rot. Well, do you know what rotting means? Now, see, you were transitioning from pumpkins, your topic, to my topic, which is mold. And moldy thingies. And, and fermented thingies. Well, but we can't get into that. No, but. yeah, we're not going to. We just we just we'll stay wide away. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. We'll just say no, I can't. Uh, but mold, I like mold a lot. I think mold's really cool. I have some mold in my room that's growing right now. Mold is cute. Okay, that's not. Uh, huh, that's a weird take right there. But uh, see, that pumpkin that you're like, oh, nothing happens to it. It's actually food for the mold. The mold eats it. And the little flies eat it. So when it rots, it's being eaten. You got me there. Yeah. So maybe a, does, maybe a pumpkin does go towards a purpose every time. Yeah, it goes to a purpose of maybe, making mold. Maybe I could apply that to my own life. That, you know, regardless of how terrible it is you know maybe i am still going towards something nah <laughs> that's no no nah. <laughs> no no one thing i learned uh babysitting one of my listeners actually no this was younger than my sister i think i was babysitting like a six-year-old and i remember this story close to our audience close to my audience a little a little younger uh i remember this is stuck with me and this is how i i try to live my life in this kind of me- method now this is like two years ago, I think. Uh, I was waiting, sitting, sitting this little guy, and or I know we were having dinner, and he had a, a tub of ice cream, and he was walking around the house with it. And his dad goes, "Listen, buddy, that tub of ice cream is gonna melt if you keep walking around with it." And he just goes, "No, it won't." And I was like, "He's so confident. I need to be that confident in my daily life." And even though he's wrong. And because he's clearly wrong, the ice cream is going to melt. And he's just walking around saying, no, no, it won't. And I was like, wow, he knows what he's talking about, even though he doesn't. That's how I need to be now. So now I've decided I'm just going to be like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, even though I don't. Well, no, that's not true. I do know what I'm talking about all the time. But yeah, just that confidence is key, you know. That is. Especially know, when it comes to ice cream. Yeah. Uh, I like ice cream. Mm-hmm. You like ice cream. Me too, yeah. I had ice cream um, yesterday. My therapist likes ice cream. We've talked about that. Yeah. But yeah. she said I need to work on my confidence. So. I feel like you're, you're uh, I was going to say you're doing better. She said I need to work on my conf- confidence. I think you. I think she meant she need, you need to speak on your speaking, work on your speaking voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speak a little better. Uh, speak up. Speak, enunciate your words. Dude, now you're reminding me of my speech therapist. That was a different one. Uh, James, we got to figure out how to end this show. Is a speech therapist a pathologist? A a pathologist? Isn't a pathologist a study of, like, uh, viruses? No, that's a viral. But I thought a pathologist would study a pathogen. A oh, study of pathogens. You might be onto something, or maybe it's a study of um paths. Yeah, like, like the w- path I walked on to get here. Yeah, yeah, and the path I walked on to get here too. And the path we're gonna walk on as we go back home and think about how great our show was, <laughs> is, is was and is was and was is. and is and yeah. how, um how grateful our audience members should be to be able to, to hear <laughs> the way you look, the way you're nodding. I appreciate the. Yeah. Appreciate. Cause you know, I'm just like, we poured our souls out this episode. We work so hard. 
I don't know. I'm kind of thinking this might be the natural end of things, and it's like we could just end it now. Or we could keep going. I don't know. What's a good topic to end on? Um, James is thinking, if you guys aren't wondering. <laughs> My, um, uh, um, well, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking too. Um, um, yeah. Well, okay. I was trying to think of something. Um, um do you have, wait? Oh, wait. Oh, oh my gosh, that could be a good one. No, wait, no. Mm. Oh, remember? Um, oh, no, no, that wouldn't. 